often being bottom of the class all the time. Are you bottom of the class? Yeah, I think so. It's hard being female in a male environment to a certain extent because you don't want concessions. Mm. Um, and you don't want to let down the, the rest of the female population by being a girly mm. whinger. Maybe by just indulging in you and blacksmithing and just let it happen on your terms, maybe the blacksmithing would, do, would benefit too. Just watch your step down okay. here because it's a little bit slippy. It's been a pretty relentless period, but Don has now lined up a really exciting surprise for us. Oh, an allotment too. Oh, yes. I like that. You like We're going to do yeah. something which is completely outside my experience, which is attempting to extract iron from rock. Don has recruited Dr. Jerry McDonnell, a specialist in pre industrial smelting Hi, techniques, and he'll oversee the process. Wait, Monty. Jerry, Hi, nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. I gather you're smelting. Yes, yes. Right. Inside the furnace, iron ore, which is lumps of metallic rock, is heated in layers with burning charcoal, which can reach temperatures of 1,500 degrees centigrade. Now, the metallic iron, because it only melts at 1,584 degrees Celsius, is not liquid. All the other metals used in antiquity, yeah. copper, yeah. tin, lead, yeah. would have flown out of here because they melt. Yeah. Iron is totally different because couldn't, they couldn't melt it. And because it can't be melted by charcoal, the end result is a terrifyingly hot lump of iron and rock impurities called a bloom. I mean, you can see this great grey cauliflower. That's, that's bloom there. That's it. That's, that's it. a big got lump it. there. Can somebody try and get that out? Oh, I think there it comes. Comes. he's got it. How yeah, about that's that? The fella. That's the fella. Yeah. That's another big lump, I can tell you. Really up to the... Yeah, now that yes, is just yeah, the beginning. Yeah, we now have to somehow transform this unworkable bloom into a lump of pure iron. So, when it comes out of the furnace, then it has to be reheated yeah, in order yeah, to have yeah, yeah. By reheating the bloom to 1200 degrees in the forge, the impurities, but not the iron, will melt and then can be squeezed to the surface and forced out of the metal. How will we know when it's ready? Well, what we'd expect to see is it's it slowly changing shape. And, uh, and effectively the smith starting to control that shape. That's a better heat. This is the 20th time that Jerry has done this experiment and only succeeded once before, so it's all a bit of a gamble. If Don struck the bloom directly with a hammer, it would shatter. So he's using lengths of wood to soften the hammer blows. After an hour of hammering and squeezing the impurities from the bloom, Don's blacksmithing skills take over, and he thinks he's finally found some metal. So that now is sounding really metallic. Well, you can see the slag coming out of it, and that seems to have left us with a fairly consolidated piece of so material. How do you know? There. The acid test. Okay. <laughs> if sparks fly, we'll know he struck iron. Fantastic. <laughs> I caught it on the tongs. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely iron. Yeah. So well done, that man. Oh, yeah. I'm certainly gobsmacked, <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> I didn't believe it, <laughs> did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> I was starting to lose belief at one stage. Don will now take this small piece of metal, known as a billet, and continue working it to try and remove all the remaining impurities, leaving behind just pure iron. I think everybody in the room felt they were in on something special on that. And part of that is because, truthfully, I don't think we really, really thought the magic was going to happen. And it was there. There was this nugget in there, and playing with it, conjoling it, forming it, really special. I mean, alchemy is, is, is a cliche, but it is alchemy. It was turning stone into metal. It doesn't get much more magical than that, does it? After three weeks based around intensive hammering, Don now introduces the trainees to a more delicate blacksmithing skill, basic repousse, which enables them to create three-dimensional shapes that can be used for purely ornamental work, like leaves. So far, it's been quite heavy stuff. This is much more delicate. I love doing this, the leaves and the nature stuff but I would love to do it about eight feet tall. I would love to do big stuff. 
The last skill they need to be introduced to is the art of fire welding, which involves fusing two pieces of white hot metal together to become one. No modern welding tool can replicate this. It can only be done by hand by a skilled blacksmith. Lots of blacksmiths I know are not able to do that. Yeah. It's too difficult. The trainees have to take the metal almost to the point of burning, 1,200 degrees, which is the right temperature for fire welding. I just know it's bloody hot. <laughs> and it's a white heat that sparkles. It's all done by the eyes. It doesn't matter what temperature it is, just the eyes. You see it, you do it. The margin of error is minute. Too hot and the metal will burn, too cold and the weld won't hold. They've now been introduced to all the basic skills a blacksmith apprentice would acquire after a year in college. Well, this week we've done some quite good exercises. They've all kept together and they've all kept up with each other. Jill maybe is a little bit slower, but nevertheless she's practising all the time and she's getting better. And hopefully next week we can continue and uh, show a bit more progress. A lot of modern blacksmithing work involves restoration and conservation. And for Don, it's no different, with over 70% of his and his team's work consisting of restoring old and often very intricate ironwork. Right, you'll notice that there are some railings here. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, bad, Nick. They're These are the John Burrell Almshouses in, in York, in which are one of his current restoration right. projects. This is badly manufactured material. This has only been here since about 1930, which is ridiculous, really, when you think that it should have lasted last. for hundreds of years. Some railings produced before 1945 were made from an inferior quality wrought iron and are very susceptible to rust and erosion. You can see areas where this delamination is taking place. Yeah, it explodes, basically, yeah. You're going to make some of these components to go back into these panels and you've got three days to do it, and if these are good enough components, they will be included in the panel that's going to be put back here. So, But if not, they'll be scrapped. So back at the Ferriby Forge, the trainees start their first professional job, the almshouse restoration. In a few days' time, Don's head foreman Andy will decide whether their work is good enough to go into the restored railing. And I've still got that bloody flat. Jill is replicating two damaged scrolls from the middle. Hugh has been given two bolt end scrolls to copy from the top. And Dominic has been charged with making some new leaves. Now I'm trying to measure up the piece that I'm working on uh, and compare it to the original. But it's not as straightforward as that because a lot of the original was missing. Hugh has failed to leave enough material at the end of his scroll which makes it impossible to create the snub which forms the heart of it. Whilst Hugh has produced a product like this in the past, he just seems to have completely lost it and hasn't a clue what he's doing. And he can't grasp the essence of what we're trying to achieve. Jill's um, improved quite a bit. Today, I've noticed that her hammer technique is better than it was. She's actually getting fairly accurate with the hammer. The trainees have just 24 hours in which to complete their work. It's been 10 days since I last visited the forge, and I'm intrigued to find out how the group are coping with the pressures of working unaided on their first professional job. Because today that's going to be assessed. And of course, it'll be judged by professional standards. And it doesn't matter how hard they've worked or how much progress they've made individually. Either it's going to be good enough or it won't be. I'm quite surprised. In fact, I'm astounded by the results. 
Q seems to have completely lost it altogether. Really? Yeah. He's just gone absolutely pear-shaped. Jill is improving all the time, and so she's actually probably got up to a similar standard to Hugh, um, which is really good. And a week ago, one would not have put any money on that. No, not at all. No. no. It's time for Don's head foreman, Andy, to cast his professional eye over their work. If you look at where that's coming in, you've got your, your angle piece there. It's that, yeah. It's that bit, that bit you need to come out more. So that line follows all the way around. Right round. But that is a close. If you look at that one and then look at one of the heavier ones, you can see it's, it's completely different round here, isn't it? The thickness. Your snub doesn't look very good either. No, I'm struggling with it. I really am struggling with it. With a little bit of work, I could use this one. Right. Hugh's scrolls are next. I think this is your best one, but it's just getting more material there to make the snub slightly bigger. And lastly, Dominic's leaves. Out of all four of them, I can use that one. <laughs> right. Um, if you look down here, the lines... The lines and everything are flowing down there nicely. It just matches very well. You will see yourself at different levels, but the brutal hard fact is that Dominic made one leaf that could be used, you made one that's almost there, and you made one that's almost there and can be modified. In other words, the difference between the three of you is not very great. How do you feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> Surprised. No, it's good actually to hear that. Maybe you're better than you think you are. Yes. Maybe I am. Yeah. It's serious? a good result for everybody well yeah. and an opportune moment for a word of wisdom from their mentor. You start off with this process and you actually improve for a period of time. And then you get to the stage where you disimprove because you're thinking about too many different processes and you go through hell trying to get it right. But then, if you persevere and say, I'm going to crack this, I'm going to bloody well do it, then you go for it. And then all of a sudden, one morning, it'll just click like that. And you'll never, ever forget how to do it again. Dominic, Jill and Hugh are almost at the end of their course. And it's time now for them to take on their final and biggest challenge. Now, an Englishman's home is his castle, and it doesn't matter if it's a socking great palace or a humble terrace house, it all needs a front gate, or at least it used to, because it does seem that increasingly people don't bother with a gate. And if they do get around to putting one in, they go and buy one off the shelf. But in the past, of course, gates were made by blacksmiths, so for this final project, we're going to see if we can excite the local community to care about handcrafted gates. And to that end, we put an ad in the local paper. Right, we're going to select three people, and each of you are going to make them a front gate. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and you start tomorrow morning. <laughs> With the clock ticking, the first thing the trainees do is meet their clients. So this is where you want the gate? This is it, yeah. This building dates from the 1700s, so we're looking for something that would fit in really well with um, with how it would have looked at about that time. Right, yeah. But you don't want anything that's going to be too modern that's going to stand out screaming, look at me. <laughs> Are you both into the local history? Yeah. Or is it mostly... I am, but mostly Darren It's is. mostly yeah. you. I just tag along. <laughs> <laughs> I like this rose that you've got, that's lovely. OK, I'm going to put yeah. them next beside these arms. What else did you say? I like crosses. OK, yeah. good. Very good, particularly this close that, up. Yeah. yeah. That can make for a really interesting feature, actually. Absolutely. Well, I think so, but I'm kind of biased. <laughs> <laughs> when they've worked out their designs, the trainees must now transfer them onto a template on the floor which are inside frames that are being made for them by Don's company. After talking to his client, Hugh has decided on an allegorical theme based on her life. So the idea is that this warrior, obviously in the, in the forest to try and save some princess in distress, was lured by the devil's helper who got caught in the spider's web and is now captured and being carried through the forest in the web on the back of the devil. 
Hugh's bitten off far more than he can chew. 